Hey everybody, welcome to my very basic guide. This time is about being so much purer than the common, vulgar, weak, licentious crowd. And in order to set yourself apart from the unwashed masses, you do what Tobey Maguire suggests and you go get yourself some religion. But in this video, we will focus more so on the death domain variety. As many people may know, player characters are generally pretty bloodthirsty. But what if you also get the okay emoji from a god that enjoys the carnage and bloodshed that only murder hobos can bring? This is where the Death Domain Cleric really shines above the other flavors of Clericdom as this domain is primarily concerned with your offensive capabilities. Clerics use Wisdom as their spellcasting ability, which is a pretty good ability score to focus on, since many spells in Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition usually forces you to roll a Wisdom saving throw. In addition to all of that, Clerics get access to Ritual Casting and the ability to completely swap out all of their prepared spells with the Long Rest by way of Divine Prayer which gives clerics insane versatility on any given day and allows players to rest easier knowing that they can always swap out their cleric spells for others if they don't like what they picked. These clerics are usually meant for evil NPC priest type characters that your dungeon master creates, which is why the subclass is found in the dungeon master's guide. But there is no reason that a player character cannot worship an evil murder god, but then again, it's probably better to always make sure that the rest of the group knows you're creating a morally ambiguous character to prevent issues of plot derailment and so that the other players know what to expect when going into a session as your respective characters. Now with all that out of the way, let's talk about the subclass features of Death Clerics. Starting at level 1 as a newly minted Death Cleric, you get bonus proficiency with martial weapons. This is of course on top of the regular base class cleric proficiency, so you'll be able to rock medium armor plus a shield and a better weapon compared to most other clerics. The upgrade from simple weapons to martial weapons is not that big of a deal for clerics, but it does allow for more flexibility in the way you want your Death Cleric to look like, and sometimes the rule of cool is what matters most in D&D. You also get access to the Reaper feature at level 1, giving your necromancy cantrips a bit of extra juice when fighting multiple enemies grouped together. Unfortunately, your enemies will not always be fighting in cramped spaces, so this ability is situationally limited, but the Reaper feature also gives the cleric an additional necromancy cantrip from any spell list. The go-to necromancy cantrip will probably be chilled touch since clerics can't naturally get that one. But anyways, moving on from the level 0 spells, we finally arrive to the special domain spells for the lovely death cleric. Domain spells are cleric spells that you will always have prepared and do not account against the number of prepared spells that you normally have, meaning they are essentially free bonus spells you gain that are thematically based on your subclass. Starting at the first level, we get False Life and Ray of Sickness. False Life is a pretty good way of beefing yourself up when wading into combat. You can think of False Life as an early investment of hit points, so that later on in the fight, you can focus your remaining spell slots on healing your allies. Ray of Sickness is thematically really nice and the damage is fine for an early game first level spell slot, alongside the potential poison condition without costing your concentration slot, which makes Ray of Sickness a nice spell to get for free. Coming in at 3rd level, we get Blindness Deafness and Ray of Enfeeblement. Blindness Deafness is an interesting free spell for a cleric since it is not a concentration spell, which is pretty rare for a debuff effect, and even better for clerics since many strong cleric spells require concentration. That being said, a constitution saving throw every round means that it's not a reliable debuff and will most likely be resisted more times than it succeeds. The same problem applies to Ray of Enfeeblement, except that Ray of Enfeeblement you can usually give you a benefit for at least one round, causing the enemy to deal half damage with strength based weaponry, but the trade off is that Ray of Enfeeblement does cost concentration so it's probably not worth it either. Arriving at level 5, we get Anime Dead and Vampiric Touch. Anime Dead is an interesting spell, as it potentially allows you to build a small undead army, but the constant upkeep without any special supportive abilities for your undead pals to buff them up might make the spell too costly in the long term. Ultimately, a big factor in Animate's Dead's usefulness is determined by your DM's judgement on what equipment your ghastly friends have proficiency in, and also how much stuff you're allowed to do with them without, you know, getting people pissed off at you. Vampiric Touch is a potentially really good spell for clerics to have access to, since you have proficiency with medium armor and shields, giving you a high enough armor class to walk into enemy lines without worrying too much about maintaining your concentration compared to wizards or warlocks. Vampiric Touch combines good damage with decent healing and really plays well into the death cleric's evil vibes, but ultimately suffers from competition with other concentration spells such as the classic Spirit Guardians. Moving on to level 7, we get some solid 4th level spells in Blight and Death Ward. Blight is just a solid necromancy burst spell, but it is held back by its constitution saving throw, making it do less damage on average than what you would hope for. Death Ward is a spell that actually prevents death, which I suppose is kind of strange to receive as a death domain spell, but it has death in its name so that's why it's probably there. And Death Ward is actually pretty great to have for free since it's a buff spell that actually doesn't cost concentration, which is, you know, rare. And finally, reaching the last tier of domain spells at level 9, Death Clerics get Anti-Life Shell and Cloud Kill. Both spells are, you know, kind of niche, but 
I don't think they're that terrible. Anti-Life Shell is an interesting 5th level spell that is meant to protect you from melee attackers, but it's not that useful since enemies can just shoot ranged projectiles or cast magic at you through the barrier, and also you prevent your own allies from reaching you if you need help, which, you know, can suck. Cloud Kill suffers from a constitution saving throw, and the poison fog moving away from you 10 feet every turn makes it very hard to keep enemies inside its radius of effect for more than a round. Even if you reposition yourself every turn to try and change its trajectory, it'll probably just not be worth the hassle. Both domain spells you get at 9th level take up your concentration. They both have their uses and are interesting to think about, but there are probably more impactful 5th level spells a cleric can use at that point. Alright, now that domain spells are finished, we reach another big feature for clerics, which are their channel divinity options. Despite the death cleric's darker nature, they still got their iconic turn undead as a basic channel divinity option that makes the walking dead run away from the man of faith when the enemy failed a wisdom saving throw. And when you reach level 5, turn undead becomes destroy undead, allowing the cleric to instantly vaporize an undead creature of the appropriate challenge rating when the spooky corpses failed their saving throw. The power of Destroy Undead increases as the Cleric levels up, allowing for stronger Undead Abominations to get dusted. But the unique Channel Divinity option for the Death Domain would be their Touch of Death feature, which you also unlock at level 2. When you land a hit with a melee attack, you can consume a charge of your Channel Divinity to activate Touch of Death to deal some extra necrotic damage. The damage is the sum of 5 plus 2 times your Cleric's level. Bear in mind a melee spell attack counts as a melee attack, and therefore spells such as Spiritual Weapon and Inflict Wounds does stack with Touch of Death. This is actually a pretty unique feature, since the extra damage that you get is not roll dependent, which means that you always know how much damage you will precisely do with your Touch of Death when you activate it. The damage itself is not that high, but consistency is pretty valuable in a game rolled by dice. So overall, I think the Channel Divinity option is actually pretty decent, although lacking in creativity since it's just extra damage that is limited in usage. The Channel Divinity feature is of course replenished on a short or long rest, making it pretty renewable for a full caster to just whip out on your enemies from time to time. From levels 1 to 5, you only get 1 Channel Divinity use per rest, but afterwards, starting at level 6, you get 2 Channel Divinity uses and then 3 uses at level 18. So this is a pretty, you know, replenishable resource, and it's meant to just supplement your cleric-based powers because you still are a full caster. Finally leaving the doldrums of level 2, we arrive at level 6. You try and become Death Destroyer of Worlds with the feature Inescapable Destruction. This feature allows you to completely ignore resistance to necrotic damage whenever you cast a spell or channel your divinity. The wording is unfortunate since this means that only cleric spells and channel divinity get to benefit from this level 6 feature, but resistance to necrotic damage is fairly rare and clerics naturally have access to a lot of radiant damage, so this ability is actually pretty niche in general. Once you reach level 8, you gain Divine Strike, turning your unholy fervor into necrotic energy that empowers your melee weapon attacks once on each of your turn for an extra 1d8 necrotic damage. This ability would have been even cooler if Inescapable Destruction worked with it, but sometimes you just can't have nice things. That being said, extra necrotic damage is a very reliable typing and being able to hurt enemies a little more in melee confrontations is pretty nice for a death cleric that has proficiency with martial weapons when facing smaller scrub-like enemies. Let RNGesus take the wheel, or in this case, try and get good advice from a god of death and destruction at level 10 with Divine Intervention. This is a pretty cool ability as it provides a lot of potential for storytelling between the Dungeon Master and the player, and potentially adds more roleplaying opportunities that comes with a lot of interesting and creative advantages for your DM to ponder about. But obviously since you are a willing servant to a potentially malicious entity, your god may not give you what you prayed for and the outcomes might be catastrophic for your party. Divine Intervention overall is a phenomenal ability as it cleverly combines suspense, mechanics, and the lore of the world in a codified ability for clerics to play around with, and it's just really neat to have as an ability that could potentially have massive ramifications on how the party does things moving forward. Finally, reaching level 17 on your spiritual journey gives you power beyond that of regular death clerics as you gain the Improved Reaper feature. Not exactly a grandiose title, but it is the final feature of the Death Domain subclass, and it strengthens the power of your single target necromancy spells of 1st level to 5th level in a similar fashion to what you got at level 1 with your necromancy cantrips. Improved Reaper allows you to target 2 creatures instead of 1 as long as they are within 5 feet of each other. The downside is that if the spell has a material component, then you will have to pay the extra amount as if you cast a spell twice. So spells like Revivify and Raise Dead would still be balanced and very costly. This feature is designed more for your offensive necromancy spells like Inflict Wounds or Blight to give them extra efficiency, and it is pretty strong to basically double up on your damage at the cost of only one spell slot. Another interesting spell that benefits from this feature is a spell Contagion. Being able to double up on a really devastating condition can be game changing. But the requirement of the enemies having to be adjacent to each other gives this feature a lot less opportunity to shine in many combat scenarios. 
With all that being said, when Improved Reaper does come through, it can be pretty bonkers, because it essentially mimics what sorcerers do with Twin Spell, except that it is a free passive buff to necromancy spells ranging from 1st to 5th level, so it's definitely nothing to sneeze at. And now with all that said and done, this about concludes my very basic guide on clerics of the Death Domain subclass. Thank you everybody for all the encouraging and kind comments, I really enjoy reading them, thank you guys so much. And as always, I hope anyone who watches my stuff enjoys what I create as much as I enjoy creating in the first place. I hope to see you guys next time, but until then, goodbye for now.